welcome. Well, bleh. We are ready for the last part of our storytelling watercolor uh, demo. And this is our last one. Look, here, our little cat is in the water. So we're real excited to show this part and get to this, this part of our story. They, then you can continue however you like. We, uh, we've been very excited to be able to do these watercolors with you. We hope that you've enjoyed them and we hope that we can see the end of your stories too. Thank you so much for doing it, but let's get started doing this little guy and having a good time. Okay guys, we're gonna do this little, okay, this last little part of our little adventure here with our cat. And uh, what we're gonna do is, we're actually gonna go a little bit different than what we've done the rest. I'm gonna put our cat in the picture first and then I'll lay our water in around him. And the only reason I'm doing this is, you can see I kind of, um, I had a little fun with this one when I did it. I really wasn't sure what I was gonna do with him when I started. And so I, I painted the water in first and then his little eyeballs were not white anymore. They are blue, like the water. And I wanna avoid that. So normally, um, you could use, you could do a little pencil sketch, lay in where you want his eyes, and you could actually paint something called masking fluid or frisk it in on this watercolor paper and it would resist anything going on it. Basically makes it water resistant. Um, but since we don't have any of that today, we're just gonna avoid it. And that's why we're gonna do this sketch first. And I think it'll help him be even more cute in the long run. So I want him to be pretty, um, pretty centric to the paper, but I kind of want him over in this side and I want him facing the other direction because we've made him face this way, the other two parts of the story. And I think it'll be more interesting if we, uh, we change it up just a little bit, okay? So we're gonna start over here and we're gonna start with a bean shape just like we have before. But this one, this bean is a little bit more heart, a little more heart than just long. Okay, and his little tail. It's gonna be kind of floating behind him and his little legs where he's been swimming. Little swimmy legs. Have you ever seen a cat swim? It's crazy, they do big paddles and they're super cute. It's a doggy paddle, but don't ever tell them that that's what it looks like. So I don't know about you, but my cat gets really finicky about calling him names, so. He can't be a dog, he must be a cat. Okay, so there's his little feet and his little legs. And we're gonna put his little ears on top of his head because he is very attentively watching what's going on. And we're gonna lay in those big old eyeballs. Those big round eyes. And we're not gonna do his mouth this time because he's holding his breath because he's underwater. Um, I don't know about you, but my cat, doesn't like to go underwater, but only will if he has to. Actually, my cat likes to take baths in the bathtub. Um, I, I don't know why, <laughs> it's just what it is. Um, okay, so we're gonna stop right there and then we're gonna go ahead and do the water for this, this scene. So we're gonna lay in our water all over the paper, just like we did before. Get that, Get that paper nice and damp. And you can water right over the pencil. It's not gonna do anything to it. It's gonna be excellent. So here we go, all the way across. I can remember when I was little, I used to write and draw stories all the time. And it was every day that I had this little spiral notebook that I was always doing stuff in and showing my mom and um, penning stuff up over the fridge for a while. We weren't sure we even had a fridge. It was so covered in stuff. And um, I think it was just laying the groundwork for who I was becoming as a person. And uh, mom always, always was eager to read my stories if she could read my handwriting. Okay, so we got some blue in here. We're gonna use quite a bit of paint to fill in this, this space. And that's good. Just kind of getting all of my colors and a little bit of green because I like teal. All right, so we're gonna start, you can see here, we started with the darkest at the bottom and it fades up to the light. So we're gonna go ahead and just lay in light all over and then we'll gradually get darker as we go down, okay? So we're gonna put some water in over here. 
and we'll just start up here at the top. I do have my paper tape down this time, just like before, because it's easy. It's easier to work with that way. Um, oh, look, we got some purple in here this time, because I had some purple in the palette, and that's okay. It's purple. You know, it's, it's water. Purpley, cool colors. It works out pretty well. So we just make sure we keep our paper nice and wet for this whole process. And the only thing we're going to go around with any kind of precision are his eyes. We want to be sure we can see his little eyes. Okay. And the only kind of speed you really have to work at this with is as long as your paper is wet. But because you can re-wet your paper at any time, it's not terribly, terribly time sensitive. And a lot of paints, like watercolors, if you get them wet, you can continue to work with them a little bit anyway. Uh, which is kind of nice. And I'm working in these back and forth motions, these strokes back and forth, because as you get dark, as you get deeper into the water, it can get darker, but it does go in sort of levels of darkness. So I'm kind of using that as a, an inspiration for this so that it works for my painting. Now you can see down here how this is getting really hard lines and it's not as smooth. The paper has dried out down here. So we just add more water and keep blending. And see I got rid of that whole harsh line because I re-wetted the paper. So it's really easy that if you're like, oh I, I didn't want that to be a hard line, you can always soften it up before, as long as it's not gotten too terribly dry. Okay. That's great, look at that. And look at how bright white his eyeballs are now against everything else that's going on. So now we can darken up our pigments. Okay, so now on this back side, I'm gonna do this. I'm just gonna kind of lay in a dark color and work it up. Ooh, so here's something really interesting. You see how my paper is making these little dark spots, these little bits right in here? This paper was very soft, and this paper, uh, I did not erase everything over the top of this beforehand, which has left dust in the paper. So the more that I work this paper, it may produce more of these little dots. And that's okay. It just is going to be a texture that goes with the watercolor. But if you're going to do something very fine that needs a very smooth plane, I recommend using your, a very soft eraser to go over all of the paper very, very gently. Um, that it just depends on the kind of paper that you use. If you get a really high quality heat, hot or cold pressed paper, you really don't need to do that. Uh, some even come pre-prepared -pre all for painting, and this was not. This paper was not. There's some of that. And it's funny because every other sheet that I've used out of this set is the same piece of paper. So it's possible that this one maybe didn't get the same kind of pressure or that this part of it was just a little bit soft or I'm just scrubbing on it a little hard. So you know, it could be user error. Okay, so we need a little bit more. Look at this little cat swimming. I know I'm ready for the weather to get warm enough that we can swim again. We've had kind of a mild winter, but it's not been quite cool enough to get in the water. Oh yeah, look at that, nice and deep pigment. some other color in here, a little bit of teal. Okay. 
that's nice. That's looking very nice. In fact, let's add in even just a little bit more dark, different colors. Isn't that fun? Look at that. He's so swimmy. He's just a swimmy, swimmy cat. We're going to pull some of this in because it's lighter up here towards the top. And really, if you're going to lay this much pigment down on a piece of paper, you probably ought to use a bigger brush, honestly. But this is the one I've got. So this is the one. I'm going with I'm sticking to it. One of the fun things about water is it kind of makes these really organic y kind of like squiggly shapes. Oh, yeah, some purple really adds some into that, too. Okay. Okay, well, I'm very pleased with this. So I think I'm gonna pause. I'm going to do some drying, let this set in, and then we'll go in and add some more, okay? All right, hang on just a second for us, guys. Okay, so we've gotten this all dried up, and I would just realized I had not told you about any of the things I had working on here. Um, we have, for the paper, we have just a regular mixed media watercolor paper. And I also thought that while I was drying that the reason this may be pilling up is I may be using the wrong side of the paper. Sometimes there is a right and a wrong side to watercolor paper and usually it's how it comes out of the pad. And because I tore this into, it was a very large pad and I tore this into small pieces, I don't remember which way was up and which way was down. That could also be a problem. But this watercolor paper is a Canson mixed media watercolor paper. It's 300 pound. My little kit here is a Mozart. I found out a uh, Mozart watercolor kit. And um, this one comes in a little tin. And my brush is a, it's a Pentel water brush. And it's, these are available even through, I think Walmart has some of these. Um, and mechanical, just regular mechanical pencil, and my Micron, which we've been using for all these videos, which is a three, and it's a pigment black. So there's that now that we, and, and this not good tape. Don't use this tape. Um, but in fact, if you wanna see what happens, I'll show you what happens when I peel this tape off this paper later on, and we're all gonna cringe together. Uh, but it'll be all right. <clears throat> Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put our next layer in, which is gonna be from our little guy. We're gonna put our fishes in because we might as well go ahead and lay the fishies in so that our cat has something to look at. But you know, now that I'm looking at this, it's turned out very purple and I like it a lot, but I want more blue. So we're gonna put some more blue in right quick because that's the artist's um, rights. I like blue. We want blue. Yay, look at that. Makes that bottom look nice and dark. And that's exactly what I wanted. I don't want too much extra, just enough to make the bottom edge look dark. Because it's it's getting deep down there. Now we'll do our fish. So these don't have any line work done with them. I basically just laid in some little shapes and some colors that I really enjoy. And I just kind of wanted them to be kind of circular in the, in the frame. So I'm going to go ahead and add that circular shape back in. And the nice thing about these fish is they don't have faces, they don't have ups and downs. They're just directional little shape, fish shapies. So we're gonna use the purple first. My, the one I started with. Get all these purples nice and gone. Yeah. There we go. There's a nice color. And I like to start at the bottom and work my way around. That way I'm not dragging my hand through them. Um, 
So we're gonna start down here at the bottom with a little fish shape. And this pigment is really dark. Because I've laid already put colors in here, I can lay these in much darker and it's not going to feel out of place. And it's gonna look really, really saturated. Which is what I want for these little ocean fishies. Okay, so there's one. And he's just a little like football shape with a little tail on it. You could even do round shapes if you wanted round fish. And we're gonna do some different size and shape fish too, because there's lots of different kinds of fish in the world. And they can look however you want them to. So we're gonna do two more of this little color. And I'm going to make him make these fish pass behind the cat and come up the other side. Uh, since I've changed his position, originally he was sitting in the middle, well now he's sitting off to the side. So we're going to do it this way and see how we like how it turns out. So we're going to do one up here. Make him go in a little bit more of an oval. There's a little football and a little tail. Make another little football. And a little tail, and they can just go in random places. They don't have to be anything specific. They can just be, they can just be fish. You would hate for them to try and be puppies because they would be a really weird puppy. There's a little fish. One more. Okay, so I like that number of purples. So I'm gonna wash out my brush. And now I think we'll do orange. So we're gonna really load up our brush with this orange. Come down here. I wanna mix a little red in there. Okay, yeah, really bright orangey red. And we're just gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna go around. So I'm gonna put this little red fish right here. What is that little sh one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish? Well, we're gonna do that, but with a lot more colors. If we can find a rhyme for purple, we'll have won the internet. So uh, let's see here. So there's a couple more little fish. Then we're gonna jump over here and do a bigger red fish. Put some more paint. And the little tails don't have to be perfect. They just need to look like little tails. They're just little fish. And actually, I think this one, oh my, we're gonna get some little fins on this one. Okay, so I like that. Nice. A nice little trio of red fishies. That sounds like an untuned piano. Or maybe, maybe a harpsichord or something. So we're gonna do some blue fishies. There's a really dark ultramarine blue. There we go. This one can have a little fin. Be a little bitty one. Tiny blue blue fish. Okay, so I think that's nice. Just doesn't need to have the same number for all of them, it just needs to be some. So now we're gonna do a green fish. I'm gonna do a couple of green fishes, I think. This fish we're gonna make round. So we're gonna make him a nice big fat round fish. And fish come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. You could make square fish. You could make you could make flat fish. You can make long skinny snake fish. You could make any kind of fish you like. There are all kinds of crazy sea creatures. And if you ever feel uninspired, you should go check out nature documentaries, especially ones that are about the ocean, because they are crazy there's all kinds of stuff down there to see and who doesn't want to watch nature documentaries especially right now okay all right and 
the last color we're going to do is yellow. So we're really going to load this pigment up. So our yellow fish is going to be up here at the top, and it's going to be kind of spade-shaped. And you can go in and add details to these fish if you want. Like, you could make these all kinds of different things, um, different kinds of fishies, but I think I kind of just like them as flat shapes. But you do what you think looks nice. There's a little fin right there. Oh, look, that looks so good. I think I'm gonna put one more little yellow fish down here and that will complete our little circle and then we'll do our cat and he'll be, we will be done. So here's another little spade shape. And see it's darker down here so the yellow is looking a little bit different and that's okay. It just looks like they're deeper underwater. Squeeze my brush, get a little more pigment on that yellow. There we go. A little fin and a little tail. I think this green fish and this yellow fish are playing tag. That looks nice. Okay. One more little fishy. Okay, so that looks really good. And I am gonna go ahead and lay in our cat. So we've got our micron now. We're gonna switch over to that, move this out of the way. And we're gonna do his little ears. Just little, little triangle shapes. We're gonna fill them in. Just a little bit. Do his eyes. Look, since we didn't do that with the, we, we avoided painting in there and they're going to be super white and they're going to stand out really, really well. I'm going to fill in his big cat pupils. Ooh. And there's a toe bean. Toe bean. Toe bean. Toe bean. These little fish right here are getting a really close look at his toes. He, they want to know what's going on. And so there's a little toe back here. Toe back here. I think one of my favorite, fat, one of my favorite things about this cat is that his little paws are just circles. They're super simple and super cute. And then his little leg little leg, leg, leg. Guys, we are almost done. Our little cat adventure is coming to an end until you decide the next part. Some more legs. Maybe he catches a fish and eats it. Maybe he makes a fish friend. Maybe they invite him to a fish party, a fish bowl, and maybe he decides that trying to catch a fish the real way is too hard, so he gets a fishing pole. He could do anything. He could go to space with a fish. It's whatever you want. That's the beauty of being able to tell a story with art. As long as you can draw it, you can do it. Okay, so now that his little features are laid in, we're just going to scribble him. We're going to scribble him in. Lots of little circles all around his eyes. Around the top of his head, around his eyes. Down his belly. His tail. So we're gonna do the same thing we did before. Up one side, 
back and forth, back and forth, back and forth with our loops all the way around, back up this side. If you try to use microns on paper that is a little bit wet, they don't work the best. So it's really better to do any drawing with watercolor with microns after the paper is really, really dry. You don't want to, um, you don't want to ruin your microns. They're not, uh, they're not the most robust of pen. They kind of are a little bit delicate. Okay, so I really like the texture of this. So now we're just gonna darken it around his face, just a smidge. Make those squiggles nice and tight to give it more density. Okay, so the very last thing is now going to be putting in that little bit of black watercolor. Just around his features here. There we go. Gives him a little more body. And down his legs. His ears a little bit. Well, okay guys, I think this is it. I think we actually have finished our little cat story. He is in the water with his fishies. Now you can decide what he does next. And if you wanna see all three of them together here, let's just show them off. So we've got part one where he comes to the beach. Tape. Part two where he takes a dive and part three where he's in the water. So now you can see them all together and you decide what happens next. If you have ideas or you want to show me, please do let us know. We have a Facebook and an Instagram. You're welcome to follow us at and tag us in it. We'd love to see it. Thank you so much, guys, and have a great day.